everybody. I hope you are all fit and well and managing to keep nice and active and nice and warm in this rather chilly weather that we're experiencing at the moment. So I am here with your afternoon challenge and my challenge this afternoon is um, kind of a crafty one. So it's an opportunity for you to get all your arts and crafts and paints and felt tips and glues and glitter if you've got it and to come up with something imaginative, something that you can create this afternoon. Now I want to have a little bit of a theme in mind because I don't want you just to create anything and my theme, I've tried to give you a little bit of a clue with the object that's hanging behind me here. Your theme is Valentine's Day. So this coming Sunday is Valentine's Day and Valentine's is an opportunity for us to think about the people that we love and the people that we care about. And I'm throwing everybody into the mix there. I'm talking about grandmas, granddads, mums, dads, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, people that maybe we haven't seen for a long time, but also maybe people that we are with all the time and actually we're probably starting to take a little bit for granted. So it's a chance to think about them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few bits and bobs that I've got on my table here. You can't see them at the moment, but I'll, I'll hold them up so you can. <clears throat> Just to get you started and to get you thinking about the kind of things that you could make. Now, before I do that, I'm going to read you one of my favourite, favourite stories. And while I'm reading it, have a listen and maybe start thinking about the things that you could be making or baking even. So the story I'm going to read to you is Frog in Love. If you know this one, you'll know it's a cracker. Frog was sitting on the riverbank. He felt funny. He didn't know if he was happy or he was sad. He had been walking around in a dream all week. What could be wrong with him. Looks a little bit like I feel at the moment, does frog there. Then he met Pig. Hello frog, said Pig. Oh you don't look very well. What's the matter with you? I don't really know, said frog. I feel like laughing and, and crying at the same time and there's something going thump thump inside me here. Maybe you've caught a cold, said Pig. You'd better go home to bed. Frog went on his way and he was quite worried. <clears throat> then he passed Hare's house. Hare, he said, don't think I feel very well. Come along in and sit down, said Hare kindly. Now then, said Hare, what's the matter with you? Sometimes I go hot, sometimes I go cold said Frog, and there's something going thump thump inside me, and it's just here, and he put his hand on his chest. Hare thought hard, just like a real doctor would. I see, he said, it's your heart. Mine goes thump thump too. But mine sometimes thumps faster than usual, said Frog. It goes one two, one two, one two. Hare took a big book down from his bookshelf and turned the pages. Aha, he said, listen to this. Heartbeat speeded up, hot and cold. It means you're in love. In love, said Frog, surprised. Wow, I'm in love. And he was so pleased that he did a tremendous jump. You see his tremendous jump? Right out of the door and up into the air. Pig was quite scared when Frog suddenly came falling down from the sky. You seem a little bit better, said Pig. I am. I feel just fine, said Frog. I'm in love. Well, that's good news. Who are you in love with? asked the Pig. Frog hadn't even stopped to think about that. I know, he said. I think I'm in love with the pretty nice lovely white duck. You can't be, said Pig. A frog can't be in love with a duck. You're green and she's white. But Frog didn't let that bother him. Now Frog couldn't write, but
but he could do beautiful paintings. And back at home, he painted a lovely picture with red and blue in it and lots of green because that was his favourite colour. And in the evening, when it was dark, he went out with his picture and he pushed it under the door of Duck's house. His heart was beating hard with excitement. Now, Duck was very surprised when she found the picture. Who can have sent me this beautiful picture, she cried. And she hung it on the wall. The next day, Frog picked a beautiful bunch of flowers. He was going to give them to Duck. But when he reached her door, he felt too shy to face her. He put the flowers down on the doorstep and he ran away as fast as he could. And soon it went on like that, day after day. Frog just could not pluck up the courage to speak to Duck. Now Duck was very pleased with all her lovely presents, but who could be sending them? Poor Frog, he didn't enjoy his food anymore and he couldn't sleep at night. Things went on like this for weeks. The poor old Duck there doesn't look very happy. How could he show Duck he loved her? I must do something nobody else can do, he decided. I must break the world high jump record. Dear Duck will be very surprised and then she'll love me back. Frog started training at once. He practiced the high jump for days on end. He jumped higher and higher, right up to the clouds. No frog in the world had ever jumped so high before. What can be the matter with Frog? asked Duck, worried. Jumping like that is so dangerous. He'll do himself an injury. And do you know what? She was right. At 13 minutes past two on Friday afternoon, things went slightly wrong. Frog was doing the highest jump in history when he lost his balance and he fell to the ground. Duck, who happened to be passing at the time, came hurrying up to help him. Good job, Duck was there. Now, poor Frog could hardly walk. Supporting him carefully, she took him home with her. She nursed him with tender, loving care. Oh, Frog, you might have been killed, she said. You really must be careful. I'm very fond of you, you know. And then at last, Frog plucked up his courage. Very fond of you too, dear Duck, he stammered. His heart was going thump, thump faster than ever and his face turned deep green. <clears throat> ever since then, they have loved each other dearly. A frog and a duck, green and white. Love knows no boundaries. And there they are, having a lovely sailing trip. Frog and duck. In love at the end. I'm glad it's got a happy ending. But the thing that's important is how happy Duck was when she got that lovely picture. And that's where I need you to start thinking and start thinking creatively. What could you make? What could you create that you could give to somebody that you love? Because when you get something that's handmade, it makes you feel fantastic because you know that somebody's taken the time to make it and they've made it especially for you. So I know you're a really creative, imaginative lot and I know you'll come up with lots of ideas of things that you can make. But I've just made a few bits and pieces just to get you started, just to get those creative juices whirring and start thinking about what you've got around your house and what you can come up with. Now, you don't have to go and buy anything especially. We can't go buy anything anyway, can we? Just use the things that you have got because I bet once you start looking, you'll be amazed what you can come up with. Now, the traditional thing to send is a Valentine's card. So I've had a go at making one here. Again, with just a few bits and pieces that I had in my house. So I just had a little bit of white paper and I had a little bit of red paper and a little bit of pink card and a little bit of ribbon that I don't know where it's gone to because my cat was playing with it earlier. I think it's under the table. But this is my card here and I've just used bits of card and little bits of paper and felt tip pens and cut some heart shapes out 
and glued them down there and then tied them on together with a little bit of ribbon. So something like that would be fantastic. The other thing you could do if you don't have card in your house, just a bit of paper. You know, there's nothing easier than just a piece of white paper folded in half. Careful with your folding. And then you can use just your felt tip pens and pencils or colouring cranes or whatever you've got in your house to do yourself a card. Remember how pleased Duck was when she got that beautiful picture from Frog. So just a picture drawn by you would be more than enough. That's fantastic. Maybe with a nice message on the inside. That would be great. And then I started thinking about other bits and pieces that you might have in your house because you might be thinking, oh, I haven't got any pink card or, oh, I haven't got any red card. Magazines. So if you get some old magazines like I've got here and you can just go through and you can cut out all the colourful pictures or pictures of flowers or things that you see in there and you could stick all those down into a collage and make one of those for somebody. That would be fantastic. See the kind of magazines that I read? I'm sure you read something a little bit more exciting. It's because I'm middle-aged. The other thing that you could do, and I know you're really good at, is lots of you are really great in the kitchen. And you're fabulous at cooking and baking. And we all know that baking is the new rock and roll anyway. So you could get creative with some baking. Now, even I've been surprised by how well these turned out. And this was a really simple recipe that I just Googled and found. Can you see those there? So these are my little love bug biscuits. So they're just little heart shapes. There they are. And then I just used my heart shape cutters that I've got here because I had a couple of these kicking around that I got at Christmas for some reason. And I made biscuits and then I iced them with just a little bit of food colouring that I had around the house. And then I got to use these that everybody loves, these little silver um, silver decorating balls that are just nice because they make that noise anyway so you could maybe have a go at making something baking something the other thing if you've got cutters like this at home is um, salt dough or play dough you could have a go at making something like that I know Mrs Phillips has a really good recipe for play dough so you could have a go at making something like that and cutting them out anything goes it's up to you really so i'm going to stop talking now because i want you to start thinking thinking of something that you could make or create or bake for somebody that you love somebody that you care about and if you want to send me pictures and videos then please do you can either send them to me on class dojo or send them to your teachers and they'll put them on the page i cannot wait to see what you come up with Okay, so time to turn your screens off now, time to start hunting around your house, see what you can find, see what you can make with a Valentine's theme. I shall look forward to seeing it all. Okay, take care for now. Bye bye.